Welcome to On The Beat, everyone. I'm over here with Dr. Ricky and Dr. Richard from Gastroenterology Associates of Columbus. And of course, we are talking all about colonoscopies, the discussion that people don't want to have. Welcome back to the show, my friends. Last time you were on, we had the conversation about the procedure and the risks and the t determinations of before, correct? Yeah. And the awareness. I want everyone at home, because the whole idea of you coming on is to raise awareness, all right, with men and women. So let's talk a little bit about some of the symptoms I might be seeing at home when it comes to colon cancer. The most common symptom is rectal bleeding. That would okay. be the most common reason that we see people in our office. Uh, then that could be blood in the stool, mixed with the stool, on the paper, pure blood. There's lots of different forms of that, but that would be the most common reason that we see people. Other uh, symptoms that we might hear people complain about is change in bowel habits, diarrhea, constipation, narrowing of the actual caliber of the stool. Is that you? But to me, the most important symptom to remember when it comes to colon cancer in particular is none. Uh, that in the early stages, it may not cause any symptoms at all. You could have it and not know it. But to us, that's the most impact, the most appropriate time for us to impact somebody because we can diagnose it in an early stage, potentially offer them a cure. Okay, well, if there are no symptoms, why would I be coming to see you or be concerned? Because either it's your age, appropriate for screening, or, yeah. or family history. I just wanted to throw that in yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's talk now. Um, I have a couple of symptoms. I'm going to give you a call. We've made the appointment. Now what? Yeah, uh, you come in, you don't need any kind of referral or anything, but on that first appointment we're going to talk through those symptoms. Yeah. Uh, we will then, uh, you'll talk to some of our staff who will walk you through the more specifics about uh, drinking the colon prep, Yeah. the colon cleanser. Uh, that's perhaps the dreaded part. All right, now we've determined that we are having the procedure, okay? Sure. Um, what are you looking for and how is the procedure done? We know that there's some form of piping and um, lighting. <laughs> Piping's a rough word, but... Okay, but, oh, okay. but the right. important thing to remember... I thought it sounded better. Uh, well, the, the important thing to remember, and we get asked this all the time, and sometimes it's, we don't think to explain this to patients, but they will be put to sleep during the procedure. Yeah. Everybody will be asleep, resting comfortably. Uh, breathing on their own, but still what we say in la-la land, such that they won't experience any discomfort and most importantly won't have any recollection of the procedure itself yeah. when they wake up. So once the patient has been adequately sedated by uh, the anesthesia provider, we insert a long flexible tube that has a light and a camera on the end of it. We advance yeah. that through the rectum uh, up to where the colon begins and then we slowly pull that out and we're looking along the way, uh, looking for polyps or any other abnormalities and if we see polyps, we actually remove them during the procedure. Oh, okay, so you can actually perform actually removal at the same time. How common is it that you see um, polyps? Oh, it's very common. Really? Uh, yeah, we see them and remove them all day, every day. So, uh, yeah, it's very important. Okay, this procedure takes depending on how long? If it's normal, you're looking at, you know, 15 to 20 minutes for a procedure. That's nothing, man. Yes. It could it's be longer thing. depending on what you encounter. I'm trying to undersell here. But certainly that's, that's, a good, that's a good estimate. Yeah, okay. So after you've done the, the polyp remover, you would then go to biopsies and things like that, correct? Sure. Yeah, and that's when we go deeper into conversation. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you send these polyps off for testing, oh. and that determines your risk. Yeah, uh, all righty. Um, very quickly, I do want everyone to understand that these type of procedures mostly are covered by insurance. Yeah, most of the insurers that in our area will cover a screening colonoscopy at 100% yeah. um, or close to it because it's felt to be such an important yeah. benefit to people for, for preventative health. Yeah, I think it's super important. We should all be doing it. Right? Yeah. Def okay, definitely. guys, appreciate you coming in again. Thanks. If you want to find out more information about Dr. Ricky and Dr. Richard, there it all is up on the screen for you now. Gastroenterology Associates of Columbus, back after this short break.